Welcome to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melanin Nostalgic Runner, and we are back for another episode of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. And this is season five, and this is episode. Hold on, hold on. Episode seven is called The Husbands, um, in the words of um, Meredith. And so let's just get right into it because, by the way, great episode amazing episode the way it ended and the way it's looking i am fully invested i am all in on it so without further ado let's get into the episode the episode continues where we left off where we have lisa um pretty much yelling at whitney and charging at um justin and then we see that the husbands basically get into it and it's quite like it's a lot and the and i mean they almost got in a fight like it, they really kind of got into it because it was all about lisa charged justin basically kind of saying like you're hot you're um whitney's a liar whitney's a liar and justin retaliated and then at first um john just moved um lisa away second time around um so what happened so it happened kind of twice so then this was subsided it was done it was like kaput for a little bit but then what occurred after this is that um basically um sorry I'm, i keep i keep thinking oh angie angie basically had to it was her party <laughs> wow and she's like okay i'm taking control over this we're not gonna have fighting in my home because this is like not at an event center this is like literally at angie's home and mary wanted to basically bless the home bless the party which by the way they should have probably did this at the beginning of the party not towards the end but neither here nor there they do this and then uh, mary before everyone prays she has everyone hold hands including lisa and whitney so they table it even though they're still bickering back and forth a little bit for the prayer and then after the prayer happens and justin literally asks asks um, lisa like so why do you think whitney's a liar and he's actually now calmed down he's just literally asking a legitimate question and then here you see that john overreacts and moves him out the way and gets lisa out of there and then this is what causes the conflict to like reignite again and then basically the party is basically over with at this point but whitney and justin leave immediately justin leave immediately while um lisa is in tears trying to like you know get calmed down and that's literally where this scene ends and then fast forward it's the next day and we have lisa and john they're recapping the event and um basically they're having the conversation of whether they think really if john and um justin can basically get back into good terms because this is the first time the husbands have ever gotten involved and this is also the first time that they've ever had any type of conflict of, of any sort and so on um, you know john's in is fully recoverable but then also too this is a dual scene so then we also see whitney with her husband justin and justin is pouring out all of their products like the vila tequila in the sink and justin's like you know what i feel better now he's like if the barlows are not going to support us we're not going to support them kind of being a little dramatic a little team too much but then afterwards he does talk to whitney and he thinks that yeah him and justin i mean him and um john could probably recover but on both ends we know that um whitney and and um lisa no it's a done deal they will never be okay they'll never be friends and i guess i'm not really i guess i'm kind of surprised why it had to take this from the figure this out like from day one minus i think one season where they had an alliance lisa and whitney have never been cool like ever they were only cool one season and it was really just an alliance but then outside of that they do not mesh they do not get along it, they're they are literally oil and vinegar so that pretty much is where this ends for now and then um after that then we go on to um see britney and britney goes to pay um heather a visit at the beauty lab 
And side note, at this point, Brittany should be full time and Heather should be friend of because even how this episode ends, I am so over Heather and maybe the producers also are as well because it seems like they are trying to phase her out. I am not going to hold you the way this ended. It was not a good look. And I don't know if Heather thinks she looks better than how she looks, but she's not looking great. She has no storyline. Um, basically her, her friend of is carrying a storyline for her because we, where is her storyline? Lisa even has a storyline at this point and Meredith can go too. Like, I hate to make a thing a thing, but like, there's a couple people on this show that, sh why are they here? Also side note, I must say this, um, Meredith and, uh, Mary were not on this episode. They were, they were, they were not in this episode really at all, other than at the party. Um, but Mary's been giving a story, so it's okay for her to not be in this episode. Meredith, when she's not there, I don't miss her. So it's kind of a similar situation. The OGs at this point really, really, really need to step up. Um, and I just kind of wanted to call that out. But outside of that, this is still a great show. So it's not, it's not saying that this is not a good show, but it's just like the people that should be carrying the show are definitely not carrying the show. They are coasting along and just basically overproducing and starting drama. And Heather, I'm speaking directly to you. So we recap, um, basically Whitney, not Whitney, Brittany's talking about the love triangle situation. And then the thing is they weren't going to talk about that initially side note, they're going to talk about Lisa and Whitney instead, um, per Heather, but then Brittany was like, no, 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 no. I was talking about my love triangle thing. I was like, okay, it's clear to me. There, there's just so many examples that shows that, um, Heather is trying to overproduce and it's, it's giving, it, it's too much and you really need to stop it. But anyway, we do find out here though, that, um, Heather actually gives her sound advice. It's like, girl, I need you to really, really, really stop focusing on the men situation and work on you know, fixing your relationship with your children. And she literally said it like that. She didn't even like give her a chase or anything. And Brittany was hurt by what she said, but she's like, look, that is a true issue. But then here, what was nice is that Brittany actually did open up on what's really going on with her. And there's, so outside of her not being close to her daughters, she also did lose her mom recently. And she just really, truly feels lonely. Like she is just having a really, really tough time. And we're literally just seeing her spiral on camera. So that's kind of what's happening. Um, but yeah, um, I do, I, I'm not that I love, I don't really love or hate Brittany, but I love that she's giving a story and let's, and be, and truthfully, she's super interesting and I want to learn more and I want to know more. So I'm invested in her story, um, which is why I'm like, okay, Heather can go. Um, and we also, and then there's also another reason why I'm saying this and you'll see later on in the episode. Why next we have this cute little scene with Bronwyn and Todd, her husband, and he just came back from New York and we find out that was actually why he was not the party. He's at New York, like about three times a week, you know, for work. And so, yeah, he wasn't there. And they do talk about, um, we actually see that <laughs> Bronwyn literally does have costumes that she uses to like pick up her husband at the airport. And, um, it was kind of funny. It's very campy, but it, it's funny. Um, and Bronwyn's like, this is my way of spicing things up. And you could tell they actually truly are a compatible couple. And I love that for them. Um, uh, <laughs> And it, they're, they're quirky. And I think they're quirky together. He's more of a dry quirky and she's kind of an out there quirky and together they definitely mesh well. So then here we then see or hear, um, that Bronwyn has this idea of, Hey, um, let's do, um, like the indie NASCAR thing or not indie NASCAR, indie, indie, um, car thing and have the ladies, um, go to this indie car thing that I guess is a big deal. And, um, I think she said long beach. Um, truthfully as someone who is a Hoosier, 
I didn't know that there were any other indie car places that were a big deal other than the Indy 500. <laughs> um, because, hello, it's called Indy for Indianapolis, right? Yeah, Indiana. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> So we do find out th the reason behind this, though, is that um, this was kind of one of their major dates and surprises that um, Todd presented um, Bronwyn with. And um, Todd thought, OK, you're going to be able to do Meet Mario Andretti, which is an Indy car racing legend. And if you're from Indiana, you know exactly who that is. Um, but instead, she was more interested in The Bachelor. And so I, it's 10 years later, and this, I guess, was her first um, anniversary or whatever. Um, so now they're going to do this again. And she also talks about how she's not going to invite Brittany. And we know why. They don't get along. It's, that's very obvious they don't get along. Um, and then she also states that she's on the fence when it comes to Heather. And honestly, yeah. She should be on the fence. And if it wasn't for the last scene, I, if I was her, I wouldn't have even, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have invited her because what we also find out is this is like pretty much like a married couples trip. So it's not like she was going to fit well when it comes to this anyway. Um, so no harm, no foul. But then also to, then the subject after this comes up of her talking about the in-laws um, and Gwen and her daughter and yeah, Todd's stance is the obvious stance. He's not with it. He doesn't like the idea that these in-laws were basically, basically abandoned them forever. And now they want to be back in their lives. So um, they talk about it briefly, but then towards the end, Todd just kind of shut it down because he's like, I'm done talking about it. And that part of the reason why he was over talking about it it, it was very clear that Bronwyn is still very, very triggered by them. And they're kind of rehashing trauma like on camera. That's really what's happening. And it's hurting not only Bronwyn, but it's definitely hurting Gwen. Um, it already was a wound that was kind of there. And it's instead of the wound being healed, it's like you're just pouring like gasoline on it and like basically making the wound larger. And so, yeah, Todd was done with the conversation, and that's pretty much how that ended there. So next we have Lisa, and she meets up with her younger sister, Denise, and they definitely do look alike. The bar, the, like, um, I'm sorry, I was going to say Barlow, but that is not Lisa's main name. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, the sisters definitely look alike. And um, so they talk about how they were growing up. And um, also, too, Lisa does vent to her sister about how Henry, and we didn't know this, but Henry's actually having a really, really tough time with Jack being gone because um, even though there is an age gap, um, Henry relied heavy on Jack's friends to kind of hype him up and stuff like that. And so now he's kind of having trouble navigating um, basically bring a preteen without her, his older brother. And he, it seems like he doesn't really have his own friends so much. So this is why we're seeing him being withdrawn and playing video games. It kind of all checks out now, which for Lisa probably explains why she was super hurt by, um, what she thought was, um, Angie's comments. And to me, I think Angie said it flippantly. I don't think she meant it literally, but of course, you know, Heather just made everything worse because that's what she does. And um, Lisa is still taking a step too far saying that Angie feels like she's a bad mother. And it's just like those words never came out of Angie's mouth. And Angie, to me, is a type of person, if she really felt that way, because we've seen it before, she would be direct enough to just say that. And Lisa just feels hurt that as her close friend who's saying it. Basically, Lisa is just hanging on so hard to what Heather is saying happened versus what really actually happened. And I just really wish... I really wish this wasn't that because... At, at the end of the day, 
truthfully, Lisa and Angie could have been resolved this. Like, there's no reason for this. And I feel like fast forward when it comes to the reunion, because I think the I don't think it's resolved right now, but I think when the reunion happens, it's going to get resolved, especially after everything gets watched back. And unless Lisa just really is that blindly wanting to see things a certain way. Um, but I guess I'm not 100% sure if it's going to get resolved because Angie, girl, um, there's something that happens in the next scene where Angie does something that she does also extremely well, which is inserting her foot in her mouth. And we're going to see this in the next exact scene that she, although she didn't mean or say things a certain way, she's not really doing herself any favors. Okay, so in the next scene, we see it is Angie, Bronwyn, and Whitney, and they are basically getting together, and they're they're kind of going on a walk together, and they're recapping the party. Um, we do find out from Whitney that um, John did call Justin, and they are going to meet up to talk it out so that they can resolve their husband friendship again <laughs> and then um the ladies bronwyn and angie mainly mainly bronwyn's like asking do you really think lisa's responsible for the rumors that were out there as far as like the jury and you're you're lying and um also bronwyn also asked the question of like how do you know that this is like a true and like the source is the correct source and all that and um when you really <sighs> The fact that she's running with this, I don't know. I just have so many thoughts. So at first I feel like this, um, I, at my initial thoughts were, okay, they're putting this storyline together. I don't think this is a real storyline. That was my first initial thought. But then once the husband's got involved, I'm like, okay, I don't know anymore. But now I don't, I, I guess my thing that I'm not quite what I think might be a, might be the case is I still am not 100% 100% sure Meredith is not involved in this or actually was Whitney who started this so that she has a storyline because honestly outside of this conflict what would be Whitney's storyline Okay yeah exactly um <laughs> At least with Lisa, she has a storyline, you know, when it comes to her children. So there, there at least is something there. And anyway, so then from there, Bronwyn does state that um, she's not really going to like take any sides when it comes to this. But also too, this is where I'm like, okay, Angie, you're not doing yourself any favors. So um, because Bronwyn's like, I don't think i don't see lisa being capable of doing this or even being someone who would go to, through that length of doing this and angie's like i could see her being this mad doing this and i'm like girl if you're trying to truly resolve your issues with your friend you would not say that so it is making me sigh eye you um angie because i think you're doing something that you keep saying that heather is guilty of doing is you're doing the same thing Heather is doing. Heather is taking um, Lisa's side and you are actually taking Whitney's side. So it is making me think that that's what's happening. But you know what? When I really, really think about the situation overall with the show, I think I understand why Angie is on Whitney's side when it comes to a lot of this. Because if you remember last season... Um, really, if it wasn't for Whitney getting involved to be messy at the beginning of the season, I don't, I'm not sure how much we would have saw of Angie because Angie was kind of, you know, um, some of the ladies, Meredith especially was trying to ice her out and Whitney made sure that she was not iced out last season. So I i'm thinking that there is a sense of loyalty when it comes to angie and whitney because of that alone like i mean quiz has kept whitney kind of assisted in keeping her snowflake last season if you remember that i had to kind of really rethink about that and think why is she so much on um whitney's side 
And Lisa didn't really do as much to like kind of defend her because last season, Lisa's focus was to make amends with Meredith. So she kind of stayed out of it. So, yeah. And the conflict also with um, Angie and Lisa started last season towards the end because of the Meredith. Meredith was kind of a little bit of the, the common denominator in that. So anyway, um, I'm not sure if that's going to come up later on this season, but that's just food for thought, just kind of what I was thinking when it comes to that. But anyway, moving on, Bronwyn then invites the ladies to this anniversary party that she's going to have when it comes to the NAS, like to the, when it comes to any car thing. And she repeats literally what she said before, that she's not inviting Brittany, but she's not so sure about Heather, but she's going to invite Heather over to her place to try to hash things out to see if they can even coexist. Um, and yeah, so the ladies are with it. And, um, Angie's like, you know, I do hope you can, and we'll, you, you, we'll see. And Wendy's kind of being neutral to it. Um, Ash, I, I think she's, you know, having a smart move when it comes to all this, but anyway, that's where this scene ends. And then we actually go on to Brittany having her own scene at her place, but yet Heather is not doing that. Yeah. So this next scene, we have Brittany having, um, doing an event, um, at her place. And yet Heather's not doing that yet at all, which is weird because Brittany is a friend of, and Brittany is carrying her own personal story in this whole entire next scene. And Heather is just tagging along. That's really what's happening here. I I'm not going to sugarcoat it. That's what's happening. So Brittany invites Heather and Angie to a Mormon church party. That's what it was. And Angie shows up and then gives, and gives Brittany a bottle of wine at this party. Um, thoughts on it. Brittany kind of shades, um, um, Angie for doing that. I get why Angie did that because Brittany drinks wine. But Mormons are not supposed to be drinking, and this is a Mormon party, and a whole bunch of other Mormons are at this party. So it kind of was not the best look, but at the same time, she did something that Heather did not do, and she showed up at someone's house not empty-handed. So, okay, yeah, once, the late, once all the Mormon people leave, Brittany's probably going to drink that wine. So it really isn't a big deal for what Brittany's saying. But... Yeah, culture wise, it was a little bit, it was a little interesting there. Um, and then Brittany, we meet Brittany's dad, and Brittany's dad, you know, um, oh, I, I think I mentioned earlier on the episode that Brittany's mom passed away recently, and it, it is definitely fresh because after they sing a hymnal, um, Brittany's dad has a speech and talks about um, Brittany's mom. And this is where we find out why Brittany romanticizes love so much because her parents had an amazing love story. They only knew each other for like three weeks and they got married and had children and they've been together for 50 plus years. Not normal. Okay. That is like, they were fated to be together clearly, but that's not a normal circumstance. And Brittany as a result, overly romanticizes love to the point where it's, you know, hello, not healthy. And anyway, so from there, after they have this nice, beautiful, like, look when it comes to Mormon culture, because also I've never seen any of this Mormon type stuff before, and it was actually quite fascinating. And this is kind of where I'm getting at, why is Heather here? Because clearly Brittany can give us some Mormon culture because she's actually still technically in it. And, um, like kind of explaining it, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I guess I'm kind of on the fence here, but immediately after they do this, Br Heather goes on to talk about Bronwyn and just goes into being Mrs. Messy box and Angie checks her and she's like, 
I know you keep seeing all these things about like Bronwyn, but Bronwyn seems really cool to me. I don't see why you have such a problem with her. And Heather continues to gaslight and not see anything wrong. And Angie basically in the confessional calls it completely nailed to the head. She's like, Heather has always wanted to hang out with the cool kids. That has always been her MO for as long as I've known her. We've known each other since high school. She did this. Like she was cool with, like she wanted to be friends with me because I was one of the cool kids back while I was in high school. And then this is what she's doing now. Still as an adult. And then also too, um, she'll do anything it takes to be friends with the cool kids, including side with them for like, un like undivided loyalty. And then Angie calls it out. She's like, I've seen this from you before. And Heather's like, what? She's like, and then has her guest, Jen. And she's like, yes. And Heather, because she's so stuck in her own way and in her butt, is not seeing it. She doesn't see that she's literally doing the same thing over and over again. And what gets me when it comes to Heather, she does not see that she's gaslighting. I'm like, girl, you really think the audience is that dumb? Like, because she's so condescending, she's not seeing it. But the way Angie said it and broke it down, it didn't hurt her feelings all the way, but it was enough where it did sting her. And she was like, I'll take it under consideration. Which, side note, we know she's not going to do that because that is what Heather says all the time. She doesn't heal. She doesn't take accountability. She just does the same stuff over and over again and expects different results. And anyway that's where that kind of ended there and she did kind of say something like all like perfect and everything perfect sounding but you knew she didn't mean it it came off really really fake and i think the way angie was even looking at her she's like girl if you don't stop with the stepford wives look because she even kind of looked stepford wivesy when she was saying what she said as far as like yeah you're right i'll take that under consideration so fake anyway moving on so then next we have John and Justin. They meet up for um, snacks and like drinks. They got some old fashions. I was like, ooh, I want some old fashioned. I can't drink until Saturday. <laughs> um, I got work done, so there's no way that's going to happen. Which side, and why I mean work done, I mean dental work. So yeah. Um, which side note, that's why I'm not on camera. That's for, just in case you're wondering, dental work. Uh, anyway. So, um, the guys meet up. Long story less long, they patch things up fairly quickly when it comes to them two. But what I found interesting and kind of quite annoying um, is that John thinks Justin needs to apologize to um, Lisa. And nothing about Lisa needing to apologize to Justin. And I think they need to apologize to each other. That's just my thought. Because yes, I think Justin came off way too strong. And he's a bigger dude. He does need to calm it down. But at the same time, Lisa needs to take some accountability. And I think John needs to realize not everyone's a human doormat to your wife like you are. And you need to also, I and I know you're doing the right thing and standing up for your wife and whatnot. And yes, I know that sounded shady. It was meant to be a little shady, but I think that Justin, I think Justin should apologize to Lisa because at the end of the day, he is a guy who is, you know, talking back to a woman. It's never a good look for that to happen. But at the same time, Lisa does need to own up. She should not have charged at, you know, a man and cause a lesser man and we know this, a lesser man who does not have a respect for, you know, themselves versus others could have done things the wrong way. Um, so there's that. But anyway, that's my thoughts with that. They pretty much, as them two, as like, you know, husbands, they patch things up. Guys, like, guys are able to resolve things a lot quicker, I feel like, in, a lot, in these situations. And they knew it wasn't a big deal. That was the first argument. That's pretty much it. That, that's all that happens here. Last but certainly not least, Bronwyn. And okay, this is where Bronwyn, this is the first time where I kind of fault you a little bit. Bronwyn invites Heather over to her house. 
I would have never invite Heather to her to my house. I would invite her to like uh, my outing, but not my house. And there's a couple reasons why I'm saying this. Number one, Bronwyn, you are not friends with her. I don't invite anyone to my house that I don't see there ever being a friendship. That's just me for the most part. Unless, well, if there's alcohol involved, maybe. But you, you get the drift. Um, and y'all did not start off good. And so kind of, and, and kind of just me seeing the tea leaves and knowing how that was going to end, I would have never invite her to, to, your, to your house. Number two, Heather, I'm speaking directly to you. I am so sick of you going over to people's houses and being disrespectful. You really are giving privilege and it's not a good look. Um, I think you think you're, I, I think you really think you're much holier than thou and everything that you project that you thought Lisa was doing in the past seasons. And now what you think Bronwyn's doing, that's actually what you are doing to us, the audience and everyone else. You basically gaslit her the whole entire time tried to talk her into apologizing to you, but yet you did nothing wrong, which honestly, this whole entire time you've been on this show, the only person you have ever apologized to are the cool kids. Um, and that's really just because you just want to be in with them. So you really have only ap apologized this whole entire time on this show, your time on the show with Lisa and um, Jen. That's it. Everyone else, you do this condescending, higher, holier than thou thing, and I can't. So, and also to Bronwyn, I'm sorry, I need to get, get on you just a little bit, not too much, but girl, how you gonna have someone in your house, but you ain't got your dog stuff like cleaned up? So there was dog poop on the on the floors and places where maybe the dog went, and it's hardwood floors too. I don't even, I don't even want to think or even imagine what that house smelled like. I'm just saying, I was kind of disgusted, like quiet is kept. Um, and I can't even talk because I have cats, but like, I guess maybe that's the reason why I have cats because you don't have as many of these problems when you have cats. Um, the cats, you know, essentially go in the litter box and that's that on that. So, but anyway, that was kind of my issue with that, but long story less long, they did not get anywhere. Um, there was no accountability. Bronwyn apologized for her behavior, being the grown and adult person of, of the situation. Heather did not apologize, not one bit, called her fake, called her all these other things, basically lied and said that she didn't say these things about Bronwyn behind her back when yet she did. Also tried to lie and say, oh, Earlier on, too, I forgot, when Heather was talking to Angie, she tried to say that um, she told Angie that she was mom shaming her right then and there. She did not do that. And she also tried to say that she had um, she has um, Angie's back as much as she has Lisa's back. She does not. Like, when the producers can constantly show you footage of you doing the direct opposite, girl, I would stop it. So anyway, long story less long, Heather's not going on the trip. She shouldn't go on the trip. She doesn't deserve to go on the trip. And honestly, if she could like, if she was no longer on the show, I would not be sad because I am just so irritated that this woman continues to try to gaslight the audience if, as if we're dumb. Like own up to all of your BS, including this black eye. Cause then she also tried to make a joke about the black eye situation. And it's like, but girl, you lied to us for two years two plus years about this black eye and you also potentially could have gotten people fired from the network because you had a whole entire investigation go on trying to blame on everyone else except for the person who did it so really heather respectfully go away go away okay anyway but the episode ends where bronwyn is kind of like bothered and not really okay and they had nothing resolved and i really and this is the other thing bronwyn i wish you would have bronwyn kind of was vulnerable here but a little too vulnerable in my opinion
because instead of um, Heather being able to kick herself out, I would have kicked her out of my house so quickly, so quickly. As soon as I just saw that she was giving those stank looks and stuff like that, I was like, oh, okay, you're so I'm for real. I need you to get out of the house. Because the whole entire time, as they're trying to hash things out, I'm doing air quotes. She's literally giving these ugly looks, snide remarks, just shading her. And I'm sorry, I will never... I've had someone try to disrespect me in my house. That didn't last long at all. I was like, girl, go. You, you got to leave. And I ain't talked to them ever again in life. And I want her to have that same energy and she should have that same energy. But anyway, that is where the episode ends. I was fuming towards the end because Heather, your girl, girl. I also want, I hope there's another opportunity where like uh, Mary gets you together again. Because the way you wanted to have a moment so bad, I, I just can't. But anyway... That does conclude the episode. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mill Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.